Second Peter chapter 1 in verse 2 to 5. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Cycle the word that comes next through. Meaning that what is about to come after the word through is how grace and peace gets multiplied. You can pray. You can fast. If you do not align with how grace and peace gets multiplied, you can change the rule. It's been fixed. The protocol of access to the world of grace and multiplication, that protocol has been as, has already been established by the one who gives grace and the one who gives peace. And he's made it abundantly clear that if you want to have grace and see peace multiplied, it said it is through the knowledge of God. In essence, grace and peace will multiply to you according to the knowledge of God. Somebody say knowledge. Say it again, say knowledge. So the Bible says grace and peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge of science. Through the knowledge of physics, through the knowledge of the economy. No, sir, the Bible says grace and peace will be multiplied to you. How? Through the knowledge of what or who? Of God and of Jesus our Lord. I ask for the blessing over this world today. And I ask that it will bless beyond this house. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we we'll pray. Praise God. I love the verse three of it. I love the verse three of the scripture. According as his divine power, here's what that scripture is simply saying is that his divine power gives us all things. According as the divine power had given us unto us all things that pertains to this life. The power of God is not just there to heal the sick. The power of God doesn't just get devils out. The same power that gets devils out of your life brings all things into your life. And I'm talking about all good things. So the Bible says his power brings to us, gives to us all good things that pertain to life and godliness again through what? Say it again. I want to hear it loud and clear. Through what? The knowledge of him who had called us to glory and virtue. It is very obvious that knowledge is very critical and that is why this morning I hope to begin a series titled Mega Shifts Through Knowledge. Mega Shifts Through Knowledge. Hey, do you want to see God move things in your life? Do you want to see God move things in your career? Do you want to see things shift? in your family do you want to see things shift in your business enterprise well the bible says through knowledge that will happen through knowledge for you before you begin to think about the knowledge of science the knowledge of physics the knowledge of world affairs before you begin to think about that kind of knowledge let me quickly establish here that the kind of knowledge we're talking about is the knowledge of God. From our text, and before I say that, 
The Bible says, my people are destroyed for what, sir? The lack of what? Prayer? No. My people are destroyed for the lack of fasting? No. My people are destroyed for the lack of worship? No. My people are destroyed for the lack of dancing? No. My people are destroyed for the lack of coming to church? No. My people are destroyed for what, sir? The lack of knowledge is vital. Oh, somebody said wisdom is supreme. But let me say that you cannot access the world of wisdom except through the gate of knowledge. Cherish knowledge. And above all things, cherish the knowledge of the Most High. 2020 to 2030. God will be separating people based on the knowledge of him. The knowledge of God will establish your distinction. I'm going to say that again. The knowledge of God will be the foundation for your distinction. The knowledge of God will be the foundation for your distinction. The knowledge of God will be the foundation for your distinction please it's one thing to get to know mary kayash but please pursue the knowledge of god it's one thing to know uh, the, the best airports in the world but please pursue the knowledge of god god is about to elevate people this time around based on the knowledge of him from our text in verse 2 2nd Peter chapter 1 in verse 2 Apostle Paul revealed to us the powerful reason why some people enjoy an enviable life that is filled with grace and peace and Paul made us understand that the reason why some people in the church some people in the household of faith the reason why it seems they are in a class all alone by themselves it's not because God made them so the rich and the poor the Lord made them both the Lord didn't make them so I'm gonna say that again the rich and the poor God made them both as human beings becoming rich was a choice and a decision that they all chose to make in essence the outcomes of your life are all a function of your choices. I didn't choose to be born in a poor family, but I chose to become a, a husband who heads a poor family. I'm going to say that again. I didn't choose to be born into a, a poor family, but having a poor family, that one is my choice. I'm going to say that again because some people didn't hear me here. Let me say that to this group here. I didn't choose to be born into a poor family. But producing another poor family, that one was my choice. Oh, Pastor Sam, don't you know that the economy is so bad? I understand that. The economy is so bad in the midst of it people are becoming multi-millionaires again it's a question of choice because money has not left the earth it is called brutal truth you can change the trajectory of your life by changing your choice today and one of the things that I want to invite you to choose today is the knowledge of God. Choose to know God. Choose to pursue God. And, and the, the, the proof of your choice is not determined by your words, your actions, your decisions. This year, everybody can declare mega shift. But in the end of the year, only a few will see mega shift. And it will not be based on who God chooses. It will be based on those who make themselves worthy of the shift that God wants to bring.
Maturity is a choice. Maturity is a choice. God does not give responsibility, weighty responsibility. God does not give it to babies. God does not carry kingdom wealth and give it to babies. No, you have to grow. And to grow, you have to know. And what you need to know is the most high God himself. So Apostle Peter tells us that the reason why some people enjoy multiple wait, 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 listen to this. Grace and peace be multiplied. Listen, why some people are even yet to experience grace? Some people are having the multiplication of it. But by the way, so that it doesn't sound too theological for those of you who are listening to me, the word grace actually means favor. Peace, shalom, actually means prosperity. So let me ask you, how many of you want to see favor and prosperity multiply? Raise your hand like you made it. Somebody's even raising two hands. Bless you, man of God. I love you. I said me. Who would want it? Grace and what? Peace. Favor and what? Prosperity. So how many of you want it? Raise your hand. Now you get what I'm saying. I said, how many of you want it? Raise your hand. Grace and what, sir? Now, how is it going to come? How is it that some people are enjoying this thing that is cast to some people? I'm going to say that again. How is what is in surplus to some? How is it that it is cast to many? The Bible says through the knowledge of God. These people are crazy about pursuing God. Many are pursuing job. Many others are pursuing God. Many are pursuing contracts. Others are pursuing God. Pastor Sam, should we not go to work? Go to work and pursue God. Put it another way. Pursue God before you go to work. And you will see God at work. Can, can I say it? Because there seem to be some Anglican people here. Let me see if there are Pentecostals in the choir here. I, I said, before you go to work, pursue God so that you can see God at work in the place of work. The Bible say it is in vain for a man to wake up very early in the morning. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. Wake up. You take your bath. Everything. Put on your tie. And all of that. The only thing you don't have time for is your God. The God you want to see multiply you at work is the one you abandon at home. You have time for makeup. But you don't have time for him to make you up. Follow me carefully this month. I want to show you why families are suffering. I want to, not families of unbelievers, families of Christians. I want to show you why grace is not multiplying. A woman called me, she said, Pastor Sam. She said, I had the Apostle Joshua Selman share a story that the, he went to Kenya or Rwanda or somewhere and people were pursuing him. Sorry, sir. We want to give you houses. He said, I'm not living here. They said, no, sir. We just feel we should give it to him. What did they see that made them carry built houses to give him? Shouldn't you begin to wonder? What did they see? Does he have four legs? I'm talking about a young man from Plateau State here. Stayed in Plateau, schooled in Zaria. Never schooled in some of the schools that we went to. His obsession is God. Show me anybody that they are the boy who through faith and patience inherit the promise. The Bible says follow in their footstep. When you see a man carry his PhD and drop it by the side to pursue God. When you see a man at 70, 70 plus waking up every night 10 o'clock and will track kilometers praying praying walking kilometers hours talking to God no wonder grace keeps what sir no come on talk to me on a TCC grace keeps what when you 
you hear somebody else like Bishop Wade open his mouth to say, I pray in hours, for hours in tongues. No wonder grace is what? You can tell why it's not multiplying in your case. Stop looking for the witches. Your prayer life is non-existent. Intimacy with God has gone zero. That is why energy is on the high. You are using energy to use what divine grace should be making happen. Happening. Help me look at your neighbor. Say switch. No, 2020. Somebody says switch. If you're going to see shift, you must switch. I was sharing with one of our mothers. One of our mothers in church here who is going on mission to Ghana by tomorrow. Elderly woman. Already going to her 60s. See, Pastor Sam, God has put on my heart to go on mission to Ghana and India. So she just wanted me to pray with her. And you know what I said to her, Pastor Sam? And you know my story. I said to her, sir. I said, Mama, what God has done in the last few months of the prophetic prayer stuff, in the last few months of prayer, what God has done, sir, far outweighs anything I have seen in the last decade. In the decade, decade of struggling and strategizing. De what are you talking about? Decade of going to America back to back. Trying to see how to break through into America. Strategize the planning. One simple instruction. Pray with my people for five days. Engage the force of prayer. Pastor, it's not easy, sir. No, I now know it's just easy to preach. It's easy to sing. But to pray, you have to die. That's why, that's why they are putting signboard there. Intercessors needed. Why would they be advertising for intercessors? Nobody likes to die. Worshippers needed. Everybody will come because it's easy to worship. Hey, protocols needed. Where we all look good. Everybody will go. But, hello. Come to die. <laughs> come to die because prayer is dying there, there, is, there is no clamor in the, you don't perform when you pray you die when you leave the place of prayer God puts a mark on your body see you don't, you don't pray and not carry a mark Either you will carry on usual boldness. The Bible said when they finished praying, the Bible said they left the place with boldness. See, when, you, when you're a man of prayer, arrogance will be almost a You think you are arrogant. You can't meet the most high and fear the most low. Am I talking to somebody here? I, I, used, to, I used to wonder, sir. When I see some of these, our fathers in the faith, when I see the boldness, I say, wait, I see not the same Holy Ghost I have. I realize, no, 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 it's not just the Holy Ghost. It's what they do with the Holy Ghost. I came to steer somebody up to the place of prayer here. Look, look, look at you. You that used to be very bold and, and confident because you used to pray. Look, you are now the one life has beaten black and blue, slapping you backward, and you keep moving backward. Look at you. Life keeps slapping you backward, backward, backward. You are moving out gradually from, from limelight to obscurity. You used to be visible. We can't see you now. Life has forced you to a corner. You better get your mojo back. Get your fight back. Get your prayer life back. Something, something needs to bounce back again. Your prayer life needs to be back. You can't meet with God and not carry his fragrance around. Have you been to a beer parlor and not smell drink? Have you been where a woman is smoking, smelling, uh, where she's smoking fish? And you leave the place not smelling smoke. The proof that you've been in his presence is that you smell him. Young man, 
Forget about all these things they do on social media. Find God. If you find God, they will find you. Business owners wake up in the morning, Pastor. CEOs wake up. Guru, guru, guru. Ayaka, posa, kata. Help me touch your neighbor. Say, stop this thing. Switch. Wake up in the morning. No time for prayer. Energy. The Bible says, wake up, rise up early in the morning. And go about business. And the Bible says, only to come back at night eating the bread of affliction. Well, some of you don't even know you are eating the bread of affliction. Because averagely, what you are having as income looks to be above the poverty level. So you think you are fine because you are making two million in a month. If God opens your eyes to know how much you should have been making from his presence, you will know that what you call success is actually poverty in disguise. Grace and peace, favor and prosperity can multiply. Bokatarabaza. Through the knowledge of God. That word knowledge is very, very important here. Because the Bible makes us understand that it is through that same knowledge, sir, in verse 3, that divine power, when you begin to access that world of knowledge, the, that kind of knowledge, the Bible says that divine power begins to attract all things to you. That, that, is, that is what they call magnetic effect. Is that okay? When you begin to traffic in that world of knowledge, when you begin to know God like others don't know him, it begins to attract the power of God to you. Now watch this carefully. When the power of God begins to rest upon you in this dimension of revelation, by this dimension of revelation, by this dimension of the knowings of God, when this revelation begins to abound, power begins to be attracted. Listen to what the Bible says power will do. The Bible says the power of God will attract all things to you that pertains to this life. I know it's true now. Pastor, I know it is true. So you know what I've done lately? I cut off all unnecessary activities. Going to visit this pastor, visit them. No, 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 cut it off. The most I do this is uh, I finish my broadcast, attend to people that I need to pray for online, make calls, stay back. Stay back in God's presence. Do my work. The first walk is to walk prayer. Yes. I will never forget what one of the most successful people, scientists in his day, is a Christian. I'll never forget what he said. He said, he said, the greatest work I do is prayer. He said, because by prayer, all other works are made easier. It's, it's become so serious now, sir. My system is finding it difficult to adjust to normal life because, sir, I lie down. My wife is beside me. I lie down. I just face one direction, sir. sir your meditation becomes prayer. I don't know if anybody understands what I'm saying. You are quiet while you are praying. Your thoughts become prayer. In your sleep, your spirit is praying. Father, may somebody understand what I'm talking about. Your spirit man is heightened. You can begin to perceive error and manipulation from a distance. You can begin to perceive wickedness from afar. to attract what others pursue. <laughs> Isaac said to his son Jacob, my son, how did you find it so quickly? He said, your God brought it to me. What others are looking for? Your God brought it. That's what prayer does, sir. When you pray and access the knowledge of God through his word, divine power is made available to you and it attracts all things in your direction. Before you miss it, as I pursue the wrong knowledge, I wish I could spend time to tell you about a different kind of knowledge that the Greeks, when the Greek man used the word knowledge, and the Bible, when you hear the word knowledge, people don't mean this, they don't mean the same thing. The word knowledge in the Greek, as you find in so many places in the Bible, there are those who are called gnosis, ginosko, epigenosko. The one I'm talking about here that Peter used 
twice in this scripture here. The one I'm talking about is the one they call epignosis. In chapter, in verse 2, in verse 3, he used knowledge called epignosis. In verse 5, he now used the same word knowledge, but we're talking about gnosis. So my focus, because gnosis offers up, and beside all these things add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge, gnosis. You need to add gnosis. But watch this. To multiply grace and favor. It is true epignosis. Huh. Don't worry, I'll explain that to you today. In the entire New Testament, the word epignosis in verse 3 and verse 4. They were used 20 times. 15 by Paul the Apostle. 15 times it was used by Paul the Apostle. One time it was used in the book of Hebrews. Four by Peter. Two we've already seen. And Peter began to make us understand why Paul enjoyed the kind of favor that Paul enjoyed. He said if you see if you notice that in the life of Paul, grace and peace multiply, it was because that man, Paul, you know why, sir? He said that man, Paul, enjoyed access to epignosis, the knowledge of God. Is that okay? I'm going somewhere, sir. Listen, Paul became an object of concern to Peter. <laughs> because Peter was like, wait a minute. Paul, we know Jesus face to face. You, you saw him in Revelation. How is it that you know things that we don't know? Paul looked at all of them, including the Corinthian churches. Paul said, listen, he said, I all of you, your tongues together, you're praying in tongues. I gather your tongues together. I said, I, I alone, I pray in tongues more than all of you. There's something about prayer. It brings a, bold, a kind of bodacious confidence to you. But Paul said, the entire prayer of this church is nowhere, your prayers gathered, is nowhere compared to my prayer. Peter looked at Paul. He said, our brother Paul, whom God has given abundance of revelation, that even some of us were trying to interpret his revelation. Funny enough, he says, we're trying to interpret what Paul, God gave him. We did it to our destruction. Meaning God gave that guy too much. But, but this guy came late. Help me touch somebody. See, overtaking is allowed. You are not talking to me, somebody. There. See, overtaking is allowed. This guy came from behind, but he has access to what we don't have access to. I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus. But as you commit yourself to the things that I'm about to start sharing with you, I decree by the Spirit of the Lord that those that you've been looking ahead of you, you will suddenly begin to see yourself standing on the same line. And after a while, as you commit yourself to these same things, you will see yourself overtaken in the name of Jesus Christ. What kind of knowledge is this? This is the kind of knowledge that Paul prayed for. Because Paul knows that multiplication is tied to this kind of knowledge. So Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, listen to the prayer of Paul. Paul said that the God of our, uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epignosis of him in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him what kind of knowledge is this what is epignosis let me put it clear it means precise and the correct knowledge of God Epignosis means, or knowledge, when, when the Bible says, grace and peace be multiplied to you, according to the knowledge of God, it means according to the precise and correct knowledge of God. Father, may my knowledge of you be precise and correct. 
The reason people multiply is that they have precise and correct knowledge of who God is. Your faith cannot function beyond your knowledge of God. If your knowledge of God is defective, your faith will be paralyzed. Your faith cannot be functional in the absence of the correct knowledge of God. Somebody lift up your hands and say, Father, reveal yourself to me. It is so bad, sir, that Samuel had the voice of God and he went to Eli because he had the wrong knowledge of God. You didn't hear what I just said. God called him, he went to Eli. And that's what's going on today. God is speaking, men are going to men. He was in church. He knows his pastor. He brags about his church. The only thing he doesn't know is his God. No precise knowledge of God. Two, three times he kept hearing God. He kept going to man. Mama, no precise knowledge of God. Is it my mind? Is it God? Is it the devil speaking to me or not? No precise knowledge of God. When God is speaking to you, you still think it's your mind. No precise knowledge of God. When you know God, the Bible says you have your senses exercised to know. Let me look at your neighbor and say, it's time for maturity. No, you're not talking like him. They say, it's time to mature. And let me look at somebody and say, it's time to grow up. Tired of having, I'm not excited with a church that is filled up to capacity. They haven't looking for chairs. I'm not excited about this. How many of you know God? It's my concern. I have a church packed with people overflowing everywhere and all of that. I'm concerned about our branches. How many of our young people know God? So, so when you know God, it will show. I said, if you have a precise knowledge of God, it will show. So it is a precise knowledge of God that Joseph had that made him to say, how can I, ma madam? Madam, you fine. Ah, if you know Egyptian women, you know they are fine. Cleopatra. They are no be smart. Don't think you can overcome temptation until you have gone to Egypt and come back. Ask anybody who has been to Egypt. Egyptian women, see, they, they are skin. They have all kinds of formula they use for their body. When they are not exporting to the world. They bath in milk. They, they, they do all kinds of stuff. When you see their skin, their movements are delicate. And Kalabokasi and say young man no And there's a young man living in the same house. The Bible says day after day she will pressure him. A woman who is desperate will do anything. For her to be pressuring him, I want you to imagine how she must have been dressing. Everything thrown out. Nothing kept on reserve. Because mission must be accomplished. As those weapons were formed against him, the knowledge of God became his defense. Where we thought shall the young man keep his way clean? Ah, by taking it according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not watch her. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what, sir? So he was in this same house with this. So I'm not saying that she tempted him online. For you to know how bad we are. For you to know how low we are falling. We are falling for online temptation. I'm talking about in-house. I'm not talking about a lady who dressed a little bit stupid in the office. I'm saying, no, this one is not dressing stupid, trying to suggest. She is telling you, I'm not suggesting. Sleep with me. Day in and day out. Don't try a woman. Don't try a woman who is desperate. It only took one night with Samson. She put, what are you talking about, sir? One night, she, she said, do you love me more than this? Do you love me? Do you love me? You have not told me. 
do you love me? You have not told me. Before you know, a man who was not supposed to vomit anything to man or angels began to sit comfortably to a woman. Why, sir? The woman pushed him to a point behind, beyond his precise knowledge of God. Did you hear what I just said? She pushed him to a point beyond his precise knowledge of God. Every man falls and fails beyond the point of his knowledge of God. I'm laying foundation. I've not started yet. Is that okay? When men of his own mega ship this year, you are like, hey, car go come, house go come. We don't pray. See, when you not have the precise knowledge of God, you don't pray for those things. It was God that was pursuing when somebody drove a GL 450 Mercedes and came and parked inside my house. I didn't go asking for it. I've never knocked on any of your doors, any of you, rich or poor. I have never knocked on your door for a personal need to say, hey, you know what? I need a car. And I don't like it. Even if I don't have one, your own is mine. Hello, Josh. I want to go out. I don't have a car. Can you send your car? You will leave whatever you are doing. You will send yours home. But I will not do that. I, I'm, I'm trying to give you something here. The woman said, lie with me. Joseph, see everything. Lie with me. Can you see a naked woman and not, and not collapse? Not to now talk about seeing a naked Egyptian. Your ancestors will join you to fall. Grandfather will wake up and say, Hey, my son, you are the first in our bloodline to see. We join you. We join you. We fall with you. Ah. But pastor, a young man who has the precise knowledge of God, listen to his response. Pastor Shego. He said, Madam, see your body fine. I shall like, hey, I know you're about to fall for me. Says, you look beautiful. God made you well. I like you. But I will not lie with you. Because listen, he said, this is not about offending a pastor. I, I'm not afraid of our music coordinator or ushering director. No, no, no. I have a precise, I have a big Moses. I have a precise and nobody teach me this one. This one a correct knowledge of God. Now listen, some people will call this fornication. Now listen, that is to their knowledge of God. Me. To do this one is called great wickedness. It is, you see, the interpretation of the sin is dependent on your. Say, say, say it again. That is why some man of God, that is why some, based on their knowledge of God, they will say, My sister, what is it? Now she be we are Christians now. Uh, she be God forgive us. She will just do this thing now and then get over it. Again, that is based on the awesa. It's a faulty knowledge of God that delivers for such iniquity. Precise knowledge of God interprets events differently. Sir, children of God were gathered. Mama, children of God were gathered. And Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, all of you, we are about to conduct a promotion exercise. And all civil servants who bow to this corruption in this place will be promoted. And the Bible says, one after the other, including deacon, pastor, archbishop, the Bible says all of them began to do what? They began to bow. And then there were these four guys. Hey! I could hear their past, the pastor of their church. Hey, Jay, 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 Bishop, Dan, Dan, Dan. You kneel down. And 
I say, Pastor, Pastor, even you. <laughs> say, no, my son, my son, listen, it's for now. It's for now. It's for now. Listen, God understands. It's for God what? It's your knowledge of God. to lose money. Money. 50 million. Ah! Us! And then after we talk to God. The guy say there. That's what I say. If you meet with the most high, you are not afraid of the most low. They stood there. And they look at the king. And they say, sorry, I'm uh, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we're sorry, we're not mindful to answer you. This kind of, uh, we have lost value for people like you. Uh, by the way, we just want to let you know that the God that we serve, He is able to deliver us. We have that, we have epignos, we have what? We have that precise knowledge. It is accurate that our God is what, sir? Able. I'll be I'll be demystifying that for you next Sunday. I'll be starting with four dimensions of God's knowledge you must possess to distinguish yourself in this century. Enough of struggling. Enough of bowing with others to eat crumbs. I'm going to say it again, sir. Enough of bowing with everybody. Only to be feeding on crumbs. I'm about to show you where precise knowledge because the word epignosis is precise knowledge that influences impact and it inspires behavior. Meaning you don't know him if it doesn't affect your behavior. Epignosis is not what you know in the head. It's what affects behavior. So epignosis is the reason why he said, look, I know God. God is watching me here. There are men who are saying, who say, yeah, I know God is watching us, but listen, he forgive us. Joseph said, listen, I know God is watching us. I have precise knowledge and it influences my behavior. I will not sleep with you. Daniel, I will not bow. He said, look, at old King Nebuchadnezzar, let me be clear that uh, we will not bow to you. We are not going to yield at all. Now, now listen, we know our God is able to deliver us. Uh, however, in case today he makes up his mind in case today the God who is faithful the God who is able in case today he makes up his mind that he will not deliver let it be abundantly clear to you that you've met a different breed of people. We know God too much to kneel down and bow to your God. If this is the last thing that will promote us, may we never be promoted in life. Precise an accurate knowledge of God that influences behavior. That influences decisions. So if this is the key to promotion, we are not. If our God chooses not to deliver us, that will be okay. Listen to what they now said. I like these guys. They said, our God who we serve is able to deliver us. Even if he chooses not to, we will not bow. Then they rounded up again by saying, yes, he will deliver us. Epi what? Ep Help me look at your epignosis. Anytime you are in a place where the devil is trying to make you misbehave, just say epignosis. No, 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 no. I know God too much. I lie. Nobody you go make me give up. I know God. I know God. It is gnosis if you know. It is epignosis if it influences your behavior. Am I talking to somebody that's not good? The precise 
an accurate knowledge of God that influences behaviors. They that do know their God. This year, God will distinguish you. I'll be taking you into the knowledge of the Most High. I'll be sharing with you why the knowledge of God is the reason why people do exploits. I'll be sharing with you how that you cannot fellowship with the knowledge of God and be demonstrating ignorances in the affairs of men. There is something fellowshipping with the eternal God does to you. Immortality affects mortality. When you fellowship with the Most High, His mind rubs on your mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. <laughs> How many of you want to know God this year? Wave it away. Wave it away. Begin to pursue him from now. How do you pursue the knowledge of God? Through prayer. Number two, through the study of the word. Please, let me say it this way. Through the prayerful study of the word. That you are studying the word of prayer. You, are, you open your Bible and you are praying. And you are reading, you are praying, you are reading, you are praying, you are reading. And, and your desire is what? Father, that I may know you in the pages of scriptures. I want to know you like these guys know you. A man saw the fiery furnace of fire. Three guys, they were to throw them into the fiery furnace of fire. And they say, hey guys, we are heating it up seven times more. You can feel the heat. They say, sir, we are fellowship with the presence of the most high God. The one whose presence, whose face is brighter than sunlight. So your seven times seated furnace is nothing to threaten us. We have beheld him. What we are beholding can't scare us. You didn't hear what I just said. Precise knowledge of God. So it was what helped me in 1989 as a young man. The pursuit of the knowledge of God was what I began with. Uh, 1989. That was why I said when the Muslims caught me and they said, Hey! We're going to kill you three times. I said, look, death is a, to die for him is a privilege. A big, what's up? He said, die, kill me, kill. The night they were to kill me, hit me on the floor, dislocated my stuff, my lower back, carry knife. Just when they were going to kill me, they had already drank some stuff. I didn't know they've dug a grave in the school where they were to bury me. They want to weaken me first and they were to bury me alive. I didn't know. Just when they were about to do what the wickedness they were to carry out, somebody just entered the place. His name is Victor Oyebom. I don't know where he is. I've been searching for him. Victor was a martial art guy. He was not a Christian. But everybody fears him in school. He was a labor prefect. Well, beautiful guy. He, he, he entered the place. Apparently, he said he heard the noise when they came to pick me from my room. No Christian knew. Took me to another hostel where they were to finish me. They were already making a mess of me, beating me, and I didn't know where joy and strength kept coming from. Accurate knowledge of God that was not given to compromise. Then he came inside and I heard that voice. Let him go. And that's how they left me. And they came and picked me up. It was when I wanted to stand up, I realized that I had a dislocation here. I managed to start leaving. Sir, as I took my leg out of the room, unconsciously, because out of the abundance, as I came out of it, guess what came out of my mouth? Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Songs of joy. Joy. I was singing. The guy looked at me. He said, thank God he did not kill you. And he walked away. And I went back to my hostel. And my 
my mother said no my mother said when my mother heard about it said no this is a tough time they're attempting to kill you come home that's how I got to Lagos with that dislocation they were to take me to Yaba or whatever in Bobi for operation or whatever when one day I was reading the book of Kenneth Hagin and I tapped into the precise knowledge of I was reading the name of Jesus by Kenneth Hagin and I tapped into the precise knowledge of God and Kenneth Hagin said lay your hands there and I laid my hands on my lower back and I said in the name of Jesus I'm healed and I wanted to feel I, I felt the pain I said oh no this thing doesn't work and the Lord said to me no son that's not precise knowledge in the precise knowledge of God you don't feel to believe you believe to feel he said now lay your hands back there and I laid my hands and I said Lord I believe I'm healed he said now get up I've been up since 1992 never never one day never one day have a problem of bending down or doing it never one day precise knowledge is there anybody crying for the knowledge of the most high here today poverty is a reflection of the absence of the precise and the correct knowledge of God I will prove that to you next week the precise, listen every problem is subject to the knowledge of God because knowledge is light and the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot water stand to your feet everybody I'll continue next week Lift your hands to the Father. And say, Father, open my eyes. And let me begin to have insight into the knowledge of who you are. The correct knowledge. The kind of knowledge that influences behavior. When you have precise knowledge, when you are inside the storm, you will sleep. When you have precise knowledge, and they lock you up in a cell you just need to sing at midnight when you have precise knowledge and men are saying there's a casting down you will say there's a lifting up precise knowledge shows say father open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes thank you father if there's anybody sick here the precise knowledge of God tells you that right now you are made whole. By his stripes, you were already healed before you ever became sick. That's what the precise...